I'm very happy to be here today with Dr. Rene Bernards. He is Division Head of Molecular Carcinogenesis at the Netherlands Cancer Institute in Amsterdam. And his talk was Mechanisms of Inhibitors Revealed Through Functional Genetic Screens. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. How can we use functional genetic screens to find which combinations of drugs work best? Well, I think the problem in cancer care is that we have an enormous array of, of therapeutics available and these can be combined in nearly endless combinations and the question of course is which combination is the most effective for any given patient and at this point we see a lot of, of trial and error type of guesswork in in clinical trials where people have ideas as to how they might combine drug A and drug B for a patient with a specific type of cancer and then we try it in a thousand patients and then we see well it was not such a great idea after all and I think that functional genetics can make us a little more intelligent if you wish about which combinations we are using by identifying upfront in appropriate cell line models which combinations of pathway inhibitions are particularly effective uh, in killing a cancer cell. And this is where functional genetics, I think, can make a, a real major contribution. Can the application of functional genetic screens take some of the guesswork out of clinical trials? Well, I think it can. And I think we have already seen some evidence that that is the case. So we have already seen examples where we can find, if you wish, the Achilles heel of cancer cells by functional genetic screens. The most uh, important example at this point, even though not identified through a functional genetic screen, so in that sense it's maybe not the best example, but the particular vulnerability of uh, BRCA1 uh, mutant tumors to the PARP inhibitors is one of those examples where you have learned that a specific genotype matches a specific drug response. And I think that, that genetic screens have the ability to find more of these pairs of genotypes and drug responders that we can then use in the clinic to treat specific such subsets of patients that have specific genotypes. What is the potential in clinical care for the identification of drug response biomarkers? Well, I think if there's one thing that we have learned over the last 10, 20 years, that there is no such thing as breast cancer or lung cancer or colon cancer for that matter. They are all collections of orphan diseases that are distinct in the drivers that fuel the growth of the cancer cells. And therefore, there is no one size fits all therapy. So we need to stratify patients by biomarkers to identify what are the likely um, drivers of the pathway and therefore target the drivers with the specific drugs. So the guesswork uh, used to be that we only had a definition of breast cancer and then maybe ER positive, ER negative was then a subdivision that we could make. But beyond that, we had very little limited ability to substratify. And now with molecular tools, we have an amazing ability to substratify further. And if you look at lung cancer, you already see a pie chart when you can see seven or eight different genotypes, even within the non-small cell lung cancers that each have different responses to targeted agents. So I think the future of cancer care is strictly associated with our ability to find the biomarkers to substratify the patients. That's why I wrote an article in Cell last year that had as a title, it's diagnostic, stupid. It is the ability to identify the, dif the different subtypes within a, a given cancer indication that will drive the treatment decisions in the future. And what's next for your research? Well, I'm very keen to identify which drugs work in which patients and how patients become resistant to uh, targeted agents. Because once we know how a patient becomes resistant, we can maybe be one, uh, one move ahead in the chess game with death, if you wish, um, to see that we can maybe block the resistance mechanism before it actually occurs in the patient by giving combinations of the, that, that already cut off the most likely um, uh, resistance pathways for that given tumor. So if we can know upfront what it's going to be, maybe we can already anticipate on that and combine. And I think that's what cancer therapy is all going to be about. I think it's fairly reasonable to assume, and I think that most experts in the field would now agree, that cancer can become a chronic disease where we can 
the, the, the tumor will make a move, will make a counter move. And this way we can keep the whole thing in balance for a long time. We may not be able to cure cancer, but we can make it a chronic disease with a reasonable quality of life by knowing what are the resistance mechanisms. If we block this, what is a tumor going to think of next to escape? And then they'll be ahead of the game again. And this is how I think the game will be played in the future by making it a, a slow and chronic disease rather than a lethal disease. Dr. Bernards, thank you so much. You're welcome.